This is the voice of the report of the week, signing on. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening and watching, this is VORW, the voice of the report of the week, on YouTube, as we, I think we said word for word in the last show, this is the YouTube show, not the shortwave broadcast, but the YouTube show, and this is VORW, the voice of the report of the week, VORW stands for voice of Report of the Week, came to that title because it's my voice, and I'm the Report of the Week, officially. Could also be Review Bra, or Report of the Week, gotta, gotta get rid of the, that, those extra three letters at the beginning. Well, I'm the man of many names, but mostly Report of the Week. So this is my voice, the voice of the Report of the Week. Your podcast, your broadcast, your international shortwave broadcast, heard on the HF bands and on the interwebs for the world to hear. So, here we are, 11.28 p.m. Eastern Time, it's Wednesday the 29th of April, 2015. This show is going to carry into Thursday, the 30th of April of 2015. And on this show, I really don't have much to talk about. I decided to do this show on a whim. Um, it really is every show. Now, usually on Wednesday nights, okay, because the shortwave broadcast, and I know I'm going to be talking about this in every single um VORW show, because, you know, a lot of people want, want to listen to it live, the shortwave broadcast, but just the information isn't there. So I know if you listen regularly, you're going to hear this a thousand times over, but, you know, I'm going to say how to listen live via shortwave again um, to make things easier for everyone. But anyways, so I decided to do this show on a whim. Because for the most part, Wednesday evenings, ever since the VORW show moved to, you know, Thursday evenings, and the VORW shortwave show, I should say, I mean, yes, originally we were twice a week, um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we've moved since to Thursdays, and... Wednesday nights, characteristically, is the night that I work on the shortwave show. But tonight, for some reason, I said, you know, no. I want to do a YouTube show tonight. I'm in the mood for it. In VRW, is there a thing? Yes, you know. I can do, and the same thing goes for videos. Well, let's talk about that first, and then we'll get into the standard show. But... The VORW shows for me are something that I have to really be in the mood to do, okay? And that comes and goes, you know, there's times where I don't really want to do anything. You know, I'm just being honest with you, I could, I could say, I could lie to you all, I could say, oh yeah, you know, I have this crazy work ethic, you know, all I do is sit there in that chair and just record stuff, and, but, but you know, sometimes there's just days where I'm not feeling it. It's just that simple. There's just some days where I'm not feeling it. And that's all there is to it. And it's just, uh, it's just the honest truth. It really is. There's some days where I just don't want to do anything. Where I don't want to sit there and, you know, record a show for an hour. And everyone has those days. I'm no different from the next person. We all have days where we're just not feeling it. And sometimes I'm tired and... Sometimes maybe my throat hurts. Sometimes I might be depressed. Whatever the, the situation might be. So it's really a thing I have to be in the mood for. And yes. Right? If I had to, I could record a VORW show every single day. I could. I could just sit down, you know, reserve an hour, and babble on. But part of me, me thinks that if I were to do that... The show quality would go down, and that's implying that there is any quality to it, but I think what little maybe there is would go down, uh, just because I think, you know, I'd be forcing myself to do something 
which is not a structured show. It's just something where I set up a microphone and talk. So, who knows? Or I might just get burnt out. I actually did do that with the VORW shows in the very beginning. It was in an original daily program over a year ago now. March 25th, we started 2014. Carried on daily until around April 10th. And it drags on you. It really does. It's a lot more work than you'd think, but if you're enjoying it and you enjoy what you do, it's not work at all. And that's the truth. And it's almost never work. Anyways. I was in the mood for YouTube VORW tonight. And I figure, well, the shortwave show really, you know, what what you have to do for it. It's not work either. Just have to select the clips, the music pieces you want to include in the uh, broadcast, I guess you could say. Select the music pieces. You know, compile them together, read some requests, the email, um, some interjections between the songs. It doesn't take long to make, and it's fun to do too, so it's, it's no work whatsoever. So that's why I know some of you might be thinking, well, shouldn't you be, you know, working on the VORW shortwave program tonight? And the fact of the matter is, I am going to work on it after I record this, and it's no problem at all. Not at all, no problem whatsoever. Plus, what I like to do with the shortwave program is I work on it a little bit the night before. I only do about 40 minutes worth of the show. And then the next day, only about an hour before it's to be submitted to the station, I record the beginning part of the show. So the news bulletin, which I always include in the shortwave broadcast, is as up-to-date as possible. And in case I got any other ideas for the show. So, you know, that's what I do. So no worries, not to worry. But anyway, here we are. Let's make sure the microphone is on. The microphonium is indeed on. <clears throat> that was a real uh, pathetic little throat clearing. Let's do a better one. <clears throat> there we go. My water glass is empty, so let's mosey on into the kitchen here. There's a little bit of water at the bottom, but we're going to dump it out. So let's, uh, let's get some water as we standard, as per the usual for your RW. <laughs> Going with a uh, standard drinking chalice. You know what I'm talking about, the blue one. The, uh... You can't do it on that because it's full. And now it's got two ice cubes. Yeah, these two look good. But I'm going with the standard blue glass, the uh, crystal glass. And I tried to uh, flick it. And it usually has this little ring to it, but you can't. Or it doesn't do that because it's full, so... When it's empty, it has this little neat ring, but, uh... These blue glasses, they're an iconic feature on the... The running on empty videos, especially. You've seen them. I've seen them. We've all seen them. And, uh... They've become a bit of an icon. Really. The blue, uh, drinking glass, which you see me have, you know, and sip away from sippy away at is you know something I, 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 I like it's very I guess it's one of my prized possessions you know and it's a staple to the running an empty series I guarantee you it's just a little water glass but you take it away and people are gonna notice <laughs> they are uh, but we got these glasses years and years ago as a gift but nobody used them Literally, not a single person used these glasses. 
So, you know, we were thinking, well, what the <laughs> what the heck are we going to do with these things? And we decided, or I decided, well, no one's no one's doing anything with them, so I'm going to make them mine. So we did. They're my drinking glasses, and I've been regularly using them for quite some time. I think I think I started regularly using the blue glasses as my standard drinking glass in 2011. Let's let's actually, you know what? Let's let's go back right now. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go to the first running on empty reviews. See what glassware we have, if any. Okay. Or do I not have any in these? Ooh. Let's see. Let's go to uh, running on empty. The original food review with, for some reason, fifty-eight thousand views. I don't know why would, why people would watch this. Let's let's check this out. What did I say? This is running on empty. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Huh. Boy, am I hungry. It's, it's time, time to refuel. refuel. Any of you energy drink review fans out here may notice I have a bag of food and some water here. So, what is this exactly? Yep, going with the blue glass. The blue drinking glass, even back in 2012. Or... No, no, December 30th, 2011. So, there you have it. There you have it, but these glasses, they're good. They're actually sturdy for what they are. Now, yes, a few have broken. All right, we got a set of six. Okay, we got a set of six originally, but then over time, one, one, two, okay. I think there's a set of six, maybe, um, Maybe it's just a set of... No, 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 a set of five. I'm sorry. It was a set of five glasses. But over time, of constant use and stuff, you know, things happen to them. Of course. Happens to anything. Things break sometimes. It's just it is what it is. So, two of them broke. At least two. Um, I think maybe a third, I don't know. The thing is that actually the, the the base of the glass, I guess that's what you'd call it. No, no, not the base, not the stem, but the um, I don't know the, the part where the water goes in the the cauldron. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I hope. So I'm not up to date on my glass anatomy, but that's sturdy. That doesn't break. What breaks every time is either the little base, a little circular part of the base, or the stem. That's always what breaks. Uh, it's just always what's happened. So, we lost two or three glasses that way. And about six to seven months ago, I was down to only two of these glasses. And I thought, you know, I couldn't find them anywhere else, and I was getting worried, but don't you think? I shopped around on, I think, the eBay, the Bay of E, as someone I know calls it, and, don't you think, we found it, found those exact glasses, the identical ones, literally, uh, and there was this company that sold, like, replacement glasses, so we bought two from them, and now we're back up to four, and I haven't broken any since. Very, I don't manhandle these glasses, you know, because I like them. They're good. They're good glasses, and they're classy. <laughs> they are. Sitting here at the computer, looking at the video, running on empty food view McDonald's. Paused it. I'm just looking at myself. 2011 review bra. I'm, I'm liking the suit. I am. I actually own that suit still. I don't know how it fits nowadays, but it's a good suit. Steve Harvey brand. Real nice one. Would you believe that suit... Well, number one, what I like about it is that it also is, um... You know, it's got almost like a... 
more well it's fashionable though fashionable different from the slim, you know slim fit stuff and there goes the clock going crazy <laughs> all right that's the last one but you know it was fashionable but it also had a little bit of victorian era styling but good suit can't complain but I still own it. But you believe that this suit is the same one that I wore in the uh, the pain pizza review video? It was the same one, the very same one. And it's a four-button suit. Now you don't, you, you never see a four-button suit anymore. Uh, you just don't. They're just not, you know, they're not, I guess, fashionable as they once were. They were kind of, even back in the 90s and early 2000s when they were kind of popular, even then they were, they were still a bit rare to see. But it's a four button suit, the only four buttoner that I own. And, you know, it's all right, it's a good suit. But that was a suit that I wore in the Pan Pizza Review. And because it was a four button suit, you know, when you button all four buttons like I stupidly did in that review, the jacket bunches up and it looks bigger than it is. So, you know, it definitely puffed out. And it's just that. I guess, I guess, you know what, I could thank the suit because that really did change my life. I mean, you'd think, you know, for some stupid YouTube video, you know, like, that became popular, would it really have such a life-changing effect? But it really did on me. Uh, really, really, truly did. Pretty amazing, now that you think of it, but I could thank the suit, I guess. Anyways. Here we are. Wasted 17 minutes of your time talking about a friggin' water glass. But that's the joy of the ORW shows. You know, is that there's just free reign, you can talk about whatever you want, and it's alright. It's okay. It's all okay. It's all good. But, here we go. <sighs> yeah, a little tired, to be honest. Wednesday, the 29th of April, 2015. Fell asleep. Last night. Alright, let's talk about this. Well, first of all, I meant to say this. This is standard in every VOW. I hope you're doing alright today. I do. It's soon to be Thursday. Soon to be Thursday, the 30th of, of April. I hope you had a good week so far. I really do. I know, mm, you know, April and part of May can be, you know, a drag for, for anyone. I know a lot of colleges have finals now. And for everyone else, there aren't too many holidays in this place, so it's really the, the true daily grind, you know. I mean, yeah, there's Memorial Day in late May, and then, you know, there's June, and that that's all right. At least it's getting, you know, to be summer. And, you know, July, you have, you know, the 4th of July. A lot of people take vacations, and no school then for those who attend. And so forth but really you know April and May can really be just a grind which just drags on nothing special so hope you're hanging in there and I hope you're doing all right I do so hope you're doing all right Thursday though for those who go day to day and you know Thursday gotta suffer through this day and then there's Friday and then you get the weekend to look forward to so Hang in there. Listen to plenty of VORWs. Just need to listen to eight VORW shows. That's it. Eight VORW shows. And then the work day is over. <laughs> Heard that bang. I hit my foot on the chair. But is good. Is good. If it wasn't good, I'd probably say something that I would or would not censor out on this show, depending if I remember or not. But is good. But, you know, just eight VORWs. Then the day is over. Maybe even seven if, you know, the, uh, or even six possibly if I go an hour and ten minutes for each one. So. 
So, that's that. We'll make it. We will. Today, I'm just gonna talk. Now I'll tell you about my sleep, because I'll tie into this. But today, you know, it was an all right day. Kind of standard. I woke up, though, this morning. Now, does this ever happen to you? You wake up, and you're exhausted. Oh, well, well duh, review bra. It's called grogginess, when you're groggy in the mornings. <laughs> Come on! Well, yes, no, I understand that, but not that type of exhausted. I understand mental exhaustion. You know, you wake up, the alarm clock's going off, shortwave radio's going off as your alarm to into VORW on 7490 kilohertz, and... You know, you're just so tired, you just want to go to sleep again. I, I get that. It happens to me all the time. So. I mean, physical exhaustion. Like, you are just done. You're spent. Physically, just, I shouldn't say wasted, but you have no energy at all. Lifeless, exanimate, just got no strength. Not even for any reason, really. Happened to me this morning. I just wake up, and mentally I'm awake for, for once, you know? I'm, I'm wide awake. But physically, forget it. Managed to get down here, get dressed, put on... I don't think you've really seen this suit. It's a good suit. I like it an awful lot. But, I've only worn it in one video so far, I think. I think only one video I've worn it in. But, uh... Let's find it for you. Yeah, for the White Castle... Uh, Frozen Chicken Sliders food review video. In that one... No, 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 no just, I guess I... I guess there's a new feature on the videos that says next. Auto plays off. Okay. Oh yeah, but but here you can kind of see it. White Castle Frozen Chicken Sliders review. Uh, and it's a good suit though. It's a really good one in my style. I bought it online for about it was on sale for about ninety to ninety bucks. I always try and look for the good deals with a quality suit. But this is a good one. It's an Italian suit. Uh, one button. Dark blue pinstripe suit. Wider lapels, longer jacket, the pants are wider and just draped down, which is great, that's my favorite style, and triple pleated, which is good too. It's a great suit, I wear it pretty often, but I guess I don't wear it when I film a review, but I don't have to film a review or two in that suit soon, but anyway, so I wore that today with a... With the, um, you've seen this tie, it's also a, a favorite of mine. It's a tie that I wear pretty often. Uh, you'll see me, you'll see me wear it soon. Let's see, when did I last wear this tie? It's this, uh, it's a blackish blue uh, striped tie that I'm wearing in a brick oven crust Red Baron review. Um, so I wore it with that tie. And I like that tie a lot. It goes with a lot of good suits, and it's actually a, favorite tie uh, of a good friend of mine one of my friends said that's my favorite tie and it is it's a great tie I got that tie actually as a gift back in let's see 20 uh, was it 2014 maybe early 2014 we'll go with that so work with that but anyways as I was coming down here my, my legs were just there was no strength, so I just sat down in the chair, plopped in. I was just here for a few hours, couldn't do much of anything. I was just so exhausted, so beat. Couldn't tell you why, but just one of those days. So, that was that. Then, I did go out. Um, got a bagel, got a bagel with butter, toasted. And that was that. But that was in the afternoon. 
you know, took the bus there and back. Got in and, uh, you know, by then in the afternoon, I was feeling a bit depressed for a few hours. But thankfully, I was able to dissipate. Slept from around 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Got a little nappy in there. And now here we are. <sighs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, the, uh, who knows, who knows why I was feeling exhausted, but today was a beautiful day, such an incredible day. As I was on the public bus going home, I always like to sit near the back and I look out the window, because this bus, the seats are actually facing each other in some parts, I was looking out the window, and I think it's ahead of me, because there weren't too many people today on the bus. And such a just I'm, I I have my eyes closed right now. I'm just envisioning it. Such an incredible day today. I mean, absolutely stunning. Beautiful day. Temperature is around eighty degrees, uh, which is good. Warm for this time of year, maybe a little bit warm. But oh gosh, just a beautiful day. beautiful day. Uh, the sky was full. I mean, it was a very picturesque sky. It really was. The, you know, sunny sky, bright blue sky, full of, full of nice white puffy cumulus clouds. And it was just such an incredible day. I'd say one of the most beautiful days of the year. And I have two definitions of a beautiful day. You have days like this, which are just splendid. And then I also really like the days which are foggy and rainy and uh, gloomy. Those are great, too. So either one I'll take. But today was an incredible day. And I'd say one of the picks of the year thus far. So I, I was just marveled at that. And for me, nature is something that, you know, I just really, I really like. It really is. It's something that I really do admire, and it's just something that I really do respect and admire, and I think it's just an amazing thing. And I think it's something that isn't appreciated enough. You know, a lot of people with nature, they think, you know, well, I gotta go, gotta go travel across the country to, you know, this national park or whatever to be able to truly grasp the beauty of nature. And I understand, you know, a lot of the time that's, that is that is one thing that you can do. But a lot of people fail to really realize that you can respect nature and still appreciate it and still get the most of it just from your own backyard, truly. So, you know, just something, but just such a beautiful day. And, uh, you know, that was nice to look out and see it and enjoy it. And thought that was neat. But... Anyway. <sighs> Forgot what I was going to talk about, so we're just going to switch to another topic. So last night, I managed to fall asleep at 3. Well, maybe a little bit after 3. But around 3, we'll say. I was going to stay up later, and I was going to record something for the VORW. But I'm four minutes in. I know, I wasn't even, I was, I was actually testing the microphone, because I have the microphone here, the digital one, and then I have this analog computer microphone, and I was testing that out, and I was doing like a test recording, you know, trying to test like different sounds and music, and I was like four minutes in, and I hear this sound that kind of sounds like this, you know, this clicking sound almost coming in from the kitchen. It sounds almost like something hitting a light bulb, like a glass, you know? Something hitting glass. And I look and I don't see anything. And I shrug it off, I figure out, well, you know, no big deal. And I hear it again. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
I look in, and there's this flying monstrosity in there. I mean, yeah, bugs are, bugs are bugs, right? They're there, they don't bother me too much, except for centipedes. I'm gonna tell you about those next. But this was, this, this sent chills down my spine. The thing was massive. It was this flying creature. Not to be confused with a dragon, but it was a flying creature. Say about the size of, let's, let's think. Just trying to get perspective here. It was big. It was this black beetle type creature, right? Not a stink bug either. But I'd say it must have been about the size of its body. Must have about been about the size of probably probably about a quarter, right? And that's big, not wingspan or anything, but it's just body, and. It was big. It was flying around in there, had this big stinger, which is what unnerved me the most, and shut everything off, and I said, F that. So, went upstairs, didn't even bother to shut the light off, because I didn't want to deal with it. I went to sleep, and then, and the next morning, I come down, still exhausted, and around 11, and there I see it on the floor crawling around, so I sprayed it, I'd say for good 15 seconds with you know, the good old raid, and that incapacitated it, but it was still, ugh. it was big. It was big, it was this black beetle with some red spots around the edges of its outer shell on its back. So I have no idea what type it is. I have no pictures of it, but if my verbal, you know, identification of it helped any, so who knows, but thing was flying around high speeds, crashed into the light last night. Yeah, scary. Uh, really, I just didn't want to, you know, sometimes bugs like that, they get to me, I sometimes think, well, what if, uh, what if it stings me, what if it lands on me, I don't know. Just little worries. <clears throat> but it's it's dead now it's gone don't know how it got in I'm guessing last night I did uh, go outside and I had the door open a crack so who knows maybe it flew in that way that's what I assume the current time is 12 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time it is now Thursday the 30th of April 2015 this is VOW, the voice of the report of the week. But that was that. The, uh, you know, real good end to the, the night. And centipedes, they start coming out too this time of year. But they don't really bother me. Yeah, I get they look like they're from another dimension. And they're kind of, you know, they're creepy crawly. They are. They're, they're a standard creepy crawly and scurry around like Usain Bolt fast. But they're not bad. So, centipedes, I mean, they're, if you have them in your house, as bad as they might look, they are the ultimate hunters. They kill everything that you don't want in your house. For the most part. They, they're they the ultimate hunters. They just get everything taken care of. They don't care about you. They're just afraid of you as you are of them. They stay out of your way. They only come out at night. And they're courteous little guys too. So, 
bad as they might look. I don't know, when you see it, you can't resist the urge really to get rid of it. And I, for one, while I do have this positive attitude towards them, yeah, if I see it, I'm gonna destroy it. It's just a simple fact. But if I don't see it, I don't see it. I'm not gonna actively search for them, but if I see it, it's going down. Just how it is. But, you know, the centipedes there, they're good guys. They are. So we had that flying beetle. I didn't see any centipedes yet, but just something I was thinking about. So, happy spring, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> no, no, I'm probably going to go to sleep. Three-ish. Two-thirty-ish. 2.45 ish probably something around there that's what I think but until then we'll be here 36 minutes in did a little listening to shortwave today I picked up a few stations heard Radio Argentina exterior in English they beam up to North America but doesn't make it in too well. But I was able to hear it again. I heard it last night too, but I heard it again tonight. I heard the voice of Vietnam coming in, the tail end of their broadcast. So they're playing a, a Vietnamese pop song called Conveniently Let's Go, or something called like Go Visit Vietnam. And uh, they pick up anything else of interest. I don't think so. I don't think I did. Sorry. If my voice sounds kind of strained, I'm just stretching out right now. Stretching out the arms. Over my head. But I think that's what I did. So, we'll talk about how you can hear the VORW show on shortwave again. <laughs> And then we'll uh, read some fan mail and, and wrap things up. That sounds like a plan, ladies and gentlemen. Water glass is getting kind of empty, but we can settle for now with it. So the VORW show broadcasts every Thursday evening from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. That's Eastern Time. It's 2300 hours to 0 hundred hours UTC time. And it broadcasts on 7490 kilohertz. 7490 kilohertz. Right. That's the frequency. That's where it broadcasts from. Or that's the frequency it broadcasts on. And it broadcasts via this shortwave station in Maine called WBCQ, the planet, and uses a pretty high-powered transmitter, great signals, spanning North America, Central America, parts of South America, parts of the Pacific, the Atlantic, Europe, and probably even, considering it makes it into all these regions, I, I assume it makes it into parts of northern Africa too but there's no confirmation probably like Morocco you could probably hear it so great signal great coverage and that's what shortwave is about and the VORW show broadcasts live again every Thursday evening from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time now this VORW show, though, is different from the one you're listening to right now. You know, if you've only listened to the YouTube broadcast, but you might hear me talk about the shortwave show, and you're kind of curious about what's on it. The shortwave program is much different than the YouTube one. Because, well, the YouTube one focuses mostly on talk, right? It's a talk show, pretty much. We'll talk for about a good hour. And 
that'll be that. However, the sorry the you know shortwave show is much different because it's a variety program now there is some talk and I'll give you the format of it right now it starts off for the first 10 minutes or so like a traditional VORW show I'll talk I'll talk about my day anything going on then I'll branch out into a news bulletin sorry I'm yawning folks I am do apologize not really polite to do on a live show like this but then we branch out into a news bulletin where we read the news headlines as up to date as possible in brief to give you a brief understanding of what's going on in the world for that day and then we play some music uh, western, western music pretty popular music but it spans anywhere from the big band music of the 1940s all the way through the latest hits of 2015 and everything in between so we play great music variety we take requests give the email address you can send us emails you can talk to us whatever you'd like to do and I always have a good time on the show I always have fun listening fun getting reception reports seeing where people tuned into and always a good time so it's a variety show but you know I'm there same host you know and you can listen live every Thursday evening from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Well, review bro, how can I listen live? Well, that's a great question, friend, because we're going to talk about that right now. So, you'd like to listen live to the broadcast, right? But you don't have a shortwave radio. Is there a way? Is that even possible? And as a matter of fact, there is. There is indeed a way. There's always a way. Always, always, always a way. So here's how it's done. You can listen via a site called a Web SDR. A Web SDR is pretty much a shortwave receiver, which, using the right equipment and software and what have you, is connected to the internet for multiple users to use at the same time and you could really get into more detail you could talk about you know all the how it works and what have you but really in layman's terms it's just a site which you could go online and be able to listen to shortwave radio on your computer without any need for a shortwave receiver and each web SDR is located in a different part of the world and each one has different frequency ranges which you could listen to the most renowned one is located in, in Twent, that's what I'm going to call it. It's T-W-E-N-T-E, -E, but I'm guessing it's pronounced Twent, not Twenty, but who knows, uh, in the Netherlands. And it covers the entire shortwave spectrum. And that's what I spend most of my time on when I'm listening online. But there's others located around the globe. And there's this one located in Michigan, USA and covers 7490 kilohertz, the frequency which VORW broadcasts on. And because it is most certainly in the target region, definitely on the target region, always comes in with a great, very strong signal on this receiver. Guaranteed strong signal, right? So, how do you listen? How do these sites work? Well, I'm going to give you the very simple guide because you really don't need to know all the in-depth analyses, analyses, I guess, of how things work. We'll just give you the basic instructions on how to listen, and it'll be that simple. So we'll really simplify it because that's all that's needed. So I'll provide you the link of this site in the description of the video. So you click on it, and you're going to get to this thing has all these boxes, all these dials, all these buttons. You're going to hear radio static. It's going to be this moving picture with all these weird little colors on it. And there's going to be a chat at the bottom of the screen. And it's going to look like 
as I said once, the controls of the space shuttle. It's gonna look so foreign and all this weird stuff there. But it's a lot it's very simple. You wanna listen to seventy four ninety. Say it's I'd recommend you show up at like six fifty, maybe, six fifty five PM and tune in then, so just in case the broadcast starts early. <laughs> Gonna wait it wait for it to go. That's the grandfather clock. So it's very easy. You're on the site, I'd recommend you go about five to ten minutes before seven PM and you'll see all these boxes. On the left, below the screen, right, where you see the, the dark blue kind of and maybe some golds and purples. You're going to see a box that says frequency, and there's a little thing you can click on, and you type in, in this little box, to the right of frequency, where there's going to be a number in it. Um, most likely it'll say probably 4310.00. You'll see that number in there. So, delete that, just highlight it, backspace, whatever, and type in 74 nine zero and press enter and once you press enter that means you're on now you selected the, f the frequency you want to listen to which is 7490 for the VORW then to the right of the frequency box here is gonna be a box that says bandwidth right and you'll see all these little modes it says <coughs> says CW wide, LSB, USB, FM, AM. <coughs> and these are all different modes for shortwave listening. You want to select the button that says AM. Not AM, NRW, but just AM. So you just click on that once, and you're set. And there you go, you can listen. If the audio doesn't work for some reason, you can try switching the sound and the little button that says sound from Java to HTML5 or back again, or you can refresh the page and repeat, but it's very simple. All the other dials and boxes and everything else, just ignore it, unless you want to learn about it, then you could listen to my VORW lecture about the web SDR and how it's used. But then you can tune in and listen for the broadcast, and it should work out all right. And I'll provide some instructions and a link to the site in the description of the video of this video, and that'll be that. So, I'll be there. I'll be there. RW Observer is my name, and I'll be there. So, hope to see you there, too, if you're interested. If not, if you can't make it, what have you, you could always listen to the recording online, because I always record the broadcasts. I um, always have the digital and the analog recordings for the most part, so you could always listen to that online via SoundCloud and could check out the subreddit if you're interested for the recordings there but there's always means always means to listen so don't worry do not worry and likewise i know a few of you actually have your own shortwave receivers that you could listen live on so you could always do that if you have the means but that's that so feel free to tune in Going back into the kitchen to get some water, another glass, and then we'll read some fan mail and wrap things up. 12.16 a.m. About 50 minutes in. Two more ice cubes. Ice cube number one and number two. One, two... Yes, I'm a big water drinker. Aside from my caffeinated beverages, water is my my main drink. All right, so let's put the microphone down and let's check out our fan mail. Open up the mail bag and let's see what things are to offer us this time around. Let's see what we got. Fan mail. I'm kind of 
Yeah, I'm not going to say disappointed. But kind of maybe surprised in a, a way. Because fan mail is low. Um, it is. Fan mail is low. And... Who knows? <clears throat> Just got to realize, though, that the VORW show functions off of listener response and fan mail. Okay. It does. It, it functions off of this. It's one of the crucial parts, if not, you know, the, 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 the keystone of this show. It's what holds it all together, the fan mail, the letters that we get, and the reading thereof. So it's really what holds this show together. And I understand, you know, maybe you don't have anything to say. Maybe you just think, well, you know, a thousand people watch this. Someone else is going to write. He's going to get more than enough letters and it'll be fine. But really, for this show, I, you know, said uh, I'd like to, you know, get some fan. I only got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. And that's not, not much at all. I remember I used to get 30 letters, 30 plus letters for VORW show. And now we're down to eight. So, you know, that tells me something. Um, nothing negative, just, you know, about listenership and, and, and so forth. But no problem. No worries. But what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to be insulting whatsoever, but I'm just trying to say, if you have something to say and you have some questions, please don't hold back and just say it. Just send me a message and just say it and give me something to talk about. But that's all. No hard feelings whatsoever, but just had to bring it up. I had to. I don't want to bring it up, you know, but I have to sometimes. This is one of those cases. Could you please do a review of a Hershey's chocolate bar? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Well, certainly, my friend, but what type of Hershey's chocolate bar? I mean, there's a lot. Just a plain old standard Hershey's chocolate bar. Could do it. I could. Could squeeze one in there one day. Hershey's is an icon. It honestly is. And it's probably one of my favorites of the chocolates. Either Hershey's or Cadbury for the most part. Those are my two favorites. I remember back in the day, years and years back when I was a little, little kid, I was a big chocolate eater. I mean, milk chocolate. Not really dark chocolate. I really didn't care for that, but I would just pound down those chocolate bars like nobody's business. And it was always Hershey's for me for the most part. Always. And I'd just go through, I'd say like six or seven chocolate bars a week. It was insane, but oh wow, I used to have quite the appetite. And now that I'm thinking of it, you know what? I'm kind of in the mood for a Hershey's chocolate bar right now. I kind of am. This guy's this guy's giving me a craving. So tomorrow, maybe, if I if I do choose to go out, if not Friday, or if not then Monday or Saturday, next time I go out though, you know what I'm doing? Going to the store, the convenience store. And I'm buying a Hershey's chocolate bar. I am. I can't resist now. I gotta do it. Even just to eat, not even to review, just to eat. Gotta do it. I have to. So, I'm sure you'll get a review of a Hershey's chocolate bar in time. Hi, voice of the report of the week. Hope you are doing well. I have two questions for you that I hope haven't been asked yet, or at least haven't been asked a million times. Next month on HBO, a new documentary is coming out about Kurt Cobain and it is supposed to be an honest account of his life. His daughter and wife are involved in the making of it, so the documentary will be full of personal videos, photos, etc. Would you be interested in watching it? And what are your thoughts on celebrities that became iconic in part due to their deaths? So, in regards with Kurt Cobain, I think I'd be interested in watching it, uh, especially 
considering Nirvana is such a great rock group, uh, really iconic, truly, and I can say they had many great songs. And you know, his death was well, it was tragic. You know how he killed himself and so forth. So I would watch it. I would love to watch and learn about his life and have an honest account from inside sources. You know, and just uh, just to be able to see that. So I would watch it. I definitely would. And thoughts on celebrities that become iconic in part due to their deaths. Well, sip of water. I'd say it depends on the celebrity and the death of the individual. I guess, and you know, take it as you will, but I'm most sympathetic to celebrities who either died accidentally or to those who committed suicide. Rather than, you know, it's still tragic all the same, but rather than those who did, you know, who died of a drug overdose. And that's sad, um, but it's just, I guess, personal views. But it's all tragic, and death is death. It's all sad and all a shame, no matter how you die. Whether peacefully or not, accidental or otherwise. So, you know. Always a shame. Should... Say someone who died of, you know, heroin overdose be hailed as a martyr? Not necessarily. So, you know, it all comes down to the celebrity, though. It all does. But it, I always think it's it's tragic, you know. And it really comes down to the celebrity as well. And, of course, by case-by-case case business... Uh, ba uh, case-by-case... Case, mind is blank basis, I guess, you know, where, depends on how they died and so on. Thank you for the question, and question number two, you're right, I noticed you said that questions were coming in more slowly, are you receiving them significantly less than before? If so, I think that is a shame. Thank you, from Nicole. Well, yes, questions are coming in more slowly, and, and you know, it happens with the channel, it does. The channel just isn't in a constant undulating cycle, just in a constant wave-like pattern, where sometimes it'll go up and views will be big and always be, you know, posted on some forum or on, you know, some social media site or on 4chan and so forth, and, you know, always be getting a lot of responses and fan mail, and then other times it'll be really inactive, you know, views will be down a little bit. Letters will be down a little bit. And it just happens. It's a constant cycle. And it just happens. It peaks, it drops, and then it'll go up again. It's just always what has happened. So, right now we're at one of those, I guess, is it the trough? Is that what you would call it? Is that the bottom? Bottom of a wave? Not the crest, we want the trough. I think so, I just want to make sure I'm using the, yeah. So right now we're at the trough of, you know, said wave. And it'll go up, it will, but it might take some time. But, you know, in time it will, as always. So it's a shame though, yeah. Fan mail is a big part of the show, and it's always a shame to not get too many letters. But, you know, what can you do? Thank you for writing, though. Hey, review bro. Love your VRW videos and food reviews, and I'm going to, st to start to tune into your shortwave broadcast, even though I was turned off by how complex the internet receiver seemed at first. Anyways, I'd like to ask what your average day is like. I know you make average day videos, but during the summer, how's your average day like at any other time of year? Are you in school? Do you work a job? If you're in college, what are you majoring in? If 
you're in high school, what classes do you enjoy and do you plan on going to college? So, my average day is pretty much an inactive one right now. Now, I am going to go to college, um, start up later this year, go into, probably try to go into communications arts, as it's called, and try and go into broadcasting, you know, radio especially, because it's just something I'd want to do, something that would probably make me happy. Um, or at least get a degree in, you know, communications, arts, and see what I can do with that. But the program in this college is great. It even offers some internships down at stations in the city, which, if you do good enough, you can get a job at a great station. It completely cuts out the process of having to go from small town to small town to work your way up. So we'll see. You know, ideally maybe get a job, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see where life takes us, but, you know, we'll give it a shot, and, I mean, if college isn't for me, it happens to some people. You drop out, and, you know, you, you, you survive, you do what you have to do. I know people say, you know, at least they expect you to want to be in a job where you're making, you know, $100,000 a year. You know, you have a house, you have a car, you got this, that, and the other thing. <clears throat> and that's what's expected of you sometimes. But as bad as it might be, I put those expectations aside and I just do what makes me happy. Even if it means, you know, just living paycheck to paycheck, uh, regardless of the situation. Doing no matter what. If I'm happy, that's what's important, and that's living life. Because otherwise, yeah, you can have, you know, a $100,000 a year job, can have a nice car, house, but if you're not enjoying life, there's no point to it at all. So, I'm just going to try and seek happiness for the most part. Oh yeah, but average day, I'm pretty docile right now. Do some work in the mornings. Um, go out, usually in the afternoons. Rest in the evenings and so on and so forth. Stay up the nights. Next. Let's see where we are now. We're at an hour and three minutes or so. I just listened to VORW Show 86. First off, I'd like to say that I really enjoyed the story you wrote. You put a story to the pictures you found therefore completing the experience by adding great story to the visuals. Your words, perspective, and imagination went perfectly with the images you presented. You brought the image, m images to life with your creativity. I'd also like to thank you for shouting me out, playing the clip, and putting the link to the video in the description. I really appreciate it. It's really awesome of you to support the new guy, and I'm glad you enjoy my reviews. This is the individual from the uh, food reviews I t talked about last time, the guy, uh, who does his new show, Refill. <clears throat> I also like what you said about life, and you are right. We only live once, so we should do what makes us happy and not what someone else tells us to do. On that note, keep making YouTube slash food review videos and don't listen to the haters. We are all better off if we are ourselves and do what we really want to do in life. I enjoy your reviews, Keep it up, and most importantly, keep being you. It's from Christian Whitco, the guy from Refill, he says. Well, thank you so much for your message, Christian. Thank you so much for writing. You got great reviews, and you keep doing what makes you happy. Be it reviews or whatever it might be. But absolutely, just be yourself. And make the most out of life. And thank you so much for your compliments on the story. Thank you so very much. I have been writing more to the story, trying to get it to, from paper to the computer, and I'm sure I got about 10 pages worth now, so we'll see. See where it ends up, but I figure once it's done, I'll read the whole thing for you. Maybe in a special VORW. Or cut out my blabbering at the, at the beginning and just read the story. We'll see, but we'll get it for you when it's done. Hello, the report of the week. 
I just wanted to second what another fan said in your latest VORW. More Subway reviews would be great. I'm a pretty big denizen of Subway and would love to hear your reviews. I believe when you reviewed the BLT, you commented that you don't like to do Subway reviews because of the variability on the menu. Well, that is true. There are fixed menu items. BMT, Subway Club, for example. You could order the closest to the standard for a sandwich. White slash wheat bread with lettuce, tomato, onion, oil and vinegar, salt, pepper to control for other people's tastes. Either way, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. I actually did have Subway recently. Didn't do a review, but cause I couldn't do a review because I had my classic um, BLT. Six inch, but it was a good snack. And I hadn't had Subway in ages. So it was a nice little, little thing to have. I kind of forget how good they are, really, how nice their sandwiches are, but they do. They make some good sa sandwiches. Hello, Mr. Report of the Week. In regards to your story, I find a beginning, beginning very strange, as I would think if you woke up in a place where you spent all your time, or where you spend... If you woke up in a place where you spend all of your and have been doing so for a long time, that the reaction to waking up would be very different. Not to mention that you call the place your sanctuary, which implies a state of relaxation in the presence of the boiler room. <coughs> well, if you look in these pictures at the beginning of the story, number one, this isn't the story in its entirety. Right, this is about page one of ten. So, things get, as you read more and more into it, things get developed and explained more and more. Um, so keep that in mind. This is pretty much just a preview. And the main character suffers from bad memory at times. So, especially short-term memory, um, an occasional short-term mem memory loss. And we cover that later in the story, but of course that was not explained because this was just page one we read. But of course, with that being said, that could factor in an account for the disorientation. <laughs> That's even a word. The disorientedness at the beginning of the story. And sometimes this happens to me too. You know, I'll be in a deep sleep. I'll just wake up. And for a few seconds, I just won't know really where I am. And considering this guy is laying there in a totally dark space um, and can't see anything, it may be a more prolonged experience. As for the, <clears throat> as for the sanctuary, well, this story, as you might have seen in the preface, was based off of these pictures showing the deplorable living conditions that some people have. And if you look in those <coughs> pictures, they're not good places to live. They're full of trash, they're in crawl spaces, some of them are in boiler rooms, and so forth. And you might think, well, how can anybody live in a place like that and call it home? Yet, people do exist that live in these places in real life that live in a crawl space or in a pile of trash or in a boiler room <clears throat> and live there and never leave and feel safe secure and comfortable there and yes it may not be too many people most people live in their room you know in a standard room but there's some people that live in these conditions and call them their house, their home, their sanctuary, the place where they feel safe and comfortable. And it may seem odd to some of us. Well, I wouldn't feel comfortable in there, you might say. Yet these people do. So you have to get into their mind. And putting myself as a character who lives in one of these places, you know, it's where I feel safe, where I feel secure. And... I want to isolate myself from humanity, right? I'm a recluse. In the story, I don't want to see another person. 
And that's my way of isolating myself and trying to make life as bearable and livable as possible. So to me, that is my sanctuary, putting myself as a character. So that's why. That's, that's why. I know the story at times could be confusing, but please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and thank you for asking. <clears throat> By the way, love your viewer, W. Shell. I still have some catching up to do, but haven't early watched... Oh, have nearly watched every episode. I still watch your reviews, but don't enjoy them as much, considering they don't eat the sort of food and energy drinks. All the best from Andrew. Thank you for writing, Andrew, and thank you for your questions. Review bra! Exclamation point, exclamation point. You're killing it on this Red Bull Orange Edition review. You really laid it onto them. I hate fake sweeteners and stuff, too. And at that price, too. Six out of ten is too generous. Keep up the good work, brah, from Jason. Thank you for writing, Jason. And thank you for your comments and compliments. I hate sweet. I, I, I hate fake sweeteners, too. I could just dump the sugar packet in there and, you know, deal with the extra grams of sugar going into my system. I'd rather do that than have to deal with these disgusting, you know, fake sweeteners that give it, like, this cough medicine type taste. Ugh. Ruins the whole experience. It really does. Hello. My very cherished friend Nathan is a fan of your channel, and I was wondering if it wouldn't be too much to ask to give Nathan, who also goes by the name of Young Nato, a shout out from Juke Royale. Thank you so much. And that's absolutely, I'd, happy, I'd be happy to do that. Nathan, aka Mr. Young Nato, you have an official shout out from Juke Royale. Let's hope you two know each other, and otherwise it might be weird, but, uh... Nathan, you have a shout-out. And you also have an official shout-out from the Report of the Week. Very formal and official shout-out. Review Bra approved. Let's refresh the page here and see if there's any new letters that came in, but I doubt it. Okay. Let's check out the email. RepWeekInterview1 at gmail.com If you want to send a more personal email, which I understand, send it to us there. RepWeekInterview1 at gmail.com And we'll get to it there. Hey, review bro. I really enjoy watching and listening to your videos. You're doing a great job. If you could do me a favor, and please read this, on your show. And it reads Apparently you are gorgeous, Nikki. Powerball in all caps. Exclamation point. Again we we'll repeat for clarity. His message reads Apparently you are gorgeous, comma, Nikki. Powerball exclamation point. Thanks for what you do, bro bro. Thank you for writing, and thank you for your little shout-out. Hi. Don't know if this will even appear to you or just dumped in your spam mail. However, I'm a fan of your show, English fan here. And in particular, the VRW slots have grown on me. I felt compelled to draw some art for the show. Thanks. And... He has this drawing here, and this is going to be the screenshot, or the uh, little picture for the show this time around. So we'll do that. And I think it looks good. I like it. So that will be it. See that right now. The review bra. And his taste buds we trust. Great drawing. I like it a lot. I like the little catchphrase there. And his taste buds we trust. Well, thank you for writing, and thank you for your fan art. Very nice drawing, and thank you for contributing. That being said, it's 12.42 a.m., Thursday the 30th of April 2015, and that concludes this VORW show. 
on YouTube. Another show, another episode. Thank you so much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. That's that. Please send us your fan mail. Please write to us if you're listening. If not you, then who? You saw it happen with this show where the fan mail turnout was pretty light. But it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to do anything. But if you have anything on your mind and you want to write, don't force yourself. But if you want, willingly want to write to us, you can write to us. Send us a message on YouTube or an email at repweekinterview1 at gmail.com. Either way, you can contact us about the show. Have any questions, comments, concerns, considerations, reception reports for the shortwave broadcast, or anything else, just write us. We'll take care of it all, and we'll read and respond to it at each and every VORW show. Well, thank you so much for listening. We'll get this up for you now on YouTube. Hope you have a beautiful Thursday, an absolutely splendid Thursday, a wonderful Friday, a wonderful weekend. Wish you the very best. Take care, and we'll see you later. That is all. Good day. This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing off.